Uh, hi, my name is Lan, and today I'm gonna talk to you guys about hypoxia. I'm a senior flight instructor here at Thrust Flight prior, and a CFI Academy instructor. Prior to being an instructor, uh, I actually graduated from medical school from in 2016. So I teach the aeromedical section of the CFI Academy. Hypoxia itself is defined as the lack of oxygen going to vital organs, such as the brain for higher functioning or to the muscles for proper function, proper motor function. So there are four types of hypoxia. We'll start off with the first one and the one that pilots are going to be exper probably experience the most, which is hypoxic hypoxia. Uh, hypoxic hypoxia, the atmosphere on any given day is defined or is made up of about 75 to 80 percent nitrogen, 15 to 17 percent oxygen, and the rest just small gases, so argon, carbon dioxide, what have you. The higher you go up in the atmosphere, so the more you climb, the lower pressure there is, and thus the lower partial pressure of oxygen there is in the atmosphere. So you're basically just getting less and less oxygen as you make the ascent. Thus, so there's less and less oxygen going to your brain, and less and less high cognitive function in the brain going on, and then high motor function as well. So you're gonna be feeling things like maybe a little euphoria or belligerence, you're gonna start getting blue uh, lips or cyanosis on your fingertips as well. Maybe you'll start feeling numb, your fingertips start feeling numb, and you're just start to get real hazy. Like you're, start to gonna, you're gonna start feeling real uh, hazy in the brain. Most pilots, most general aviation, air, uh, or at least private pilots or first time new pilots aren't really gonna feel this because most of our aircraft typically will only go up to about five, six, seven thousand feet, sometimes maybe up to nine uh, on a cross country. Uh, so we're not really going to experience this type of epoxy in the environment of training. When we get up to commercial flying, such as part 135 or airline or 121 airline flying, where we are flying in the flight levels, above 18,000, that's where we start to experience or start getting experience this. The FAA has regulations for, for, to, for oxygen requirements to have oxygen systems, 12,501 to 14,000. Um, if you're over there for 30 minutes and the crew must be provided it, or somebody on the crew must be, have, must be on oxygen, from 1401 to 14,001 feet to 15,000, uh, the crew must use oxygen. And then from 1501 to and above, the passengers must be pro provided oxygen. They don't necessarily have to use it, but they must be provided oxygen and the required crew must be on oxygen. And so those are the rules, the general rules that a new pilots have to learn. In terms of hypoxic hypoxia, there are some centers out there that actually have altitude chambers that you can go to. The FAA had or has one up in Oklahoma City that uh, a general aviation pilot can sign up for. So what they do is they'll take you from sea level, from field elevation, all the way up to, let's say, let's call it 25,000 feet, or at least in a low oxygen, at a low oxygen altitude. And so they'll start asking you to report your symptoms or let, if you're with another class or with, your, with somebody else, uh, you'll see the symptoms of epoxy in them. The important training for altitude chambers like this is to learn what your symptoms are in a low oxygen environment. This is important because let's say that you're on a flight and then if you don't know what, how you respond to a failure in pressurization or a hypoxic environment, then you're not gonna notice it in a critical situation. So the important the importance of a alt of altitude chamber training is so that you know your symptoms. That's usually what I have to say about hypoxic hypoxia. The second type of hypox hypoxia that we teach at the academy and that I teach my students is uh, hy hypemic hypoxia. Hypemic hypoxia is something, the red blood cell itself has something wrong with it that it can't carry oxygen to the brain or the organs. In the case of general aviation, or in the case of our archers and our Cessnas here at Thrust, that usually comes from 
carbon monoxide, car uh, carbon monoxide poisoning. Carbon monoxide is a product of combustion and it usually is associated with the use of cabin heat in the winter. So when it's cold, the exhaust manifold takes the warm air or the hot air from uh, around the exhaust and go, uh, bleeds it into the cabin for cabin heating when it's cold outside. It's the middle of summer in Texas right now, so we're not using cabin heat all that often. But when we do, if there's a crack in the exhaust manifold, a little bit of the exhaust gases can seep into the cabin if you're using cabin heat. Carbon monoxide is a colorless and odorless gas, so you might not even see or smell it come into uh, the cabin. You get enough carbon monoxide poisoning uh, in inhaled, you're gonna get similar symptoms to hypoxic hypoxia, uh, lightheadedness, tingling sensation, cyanosis in the lips and the fingertip, uh, cyanosis in the lip, um, euphoria, the treatment, or if, let's say you're in an airplane, you're on a flight, and your carbon monoxide detection systems go off, the checklist says to shut off cabin heat and to open up air vents to try to clear out the carbon monoxide from the cabin and try to get fresh air in. The problem with that, well, no, there is no problem, that's the proper procedure, but the, things that, the thing that pilots should realize is that just because you have fresh air coming in and let's say the carbon monoxide being washed out doesn't mean that the symptoms of hypoxia or the symptoms of carbon monoxide poisoning are going to immediately alleviate. Because that the, the, the carbon monoxide has such an attraction to the oxygen binding site, it may stick around for a while. And so you might still be feeling hypoxic flying the airplane even though you've turned off the cabin heat and opened up the air vents. So you still have to be able to fly the airplane in a hypoxic nature. Now you're gonna be declaring an emergency and trying to get on the ground, but try to get uh, land as soon as practically possible, but there's still you're still gonna be feeling somewhat hypoxic even though you've done the, the proper checklist and course of action for it. So that's why carbon monoxide poisoning is so dangerous uh, up in the airplane. The, the other two are, the other two, the next two hypoxias are uh, more, more, more simple, a lot more simple. So the third type of hypoxia is histotoxic. And this isn't the blood, the red blood cells ability to carry oxygen. It's actually the body's inability to uptake oxygen. So let's say uh, you just passed the check ride and you go celebrating the night after. Yay, I just got my certificate, right? Oh, but wait, you have a flight the next morning and now you're dehydrated. Um, you're, you, you woke up late and you're just feeling all sorts of ragged from celebrating your accomplishment the night before. Well, your, the, your body is now, uh, you know, uh, compromised, but it's, it's oxygen take up is less be because of the alcohol or because of however way you celebrated. Up in the airplane, a lot of, uh, especially in the Texas summer, dehydration can cause compromised ability for oxygen transfer. So it's hot up there. If you don't drink enough water, you may start feeling lightheaded uh, from dehydration, sure, but also from kind of your body's inability to absorb oxygen from the red blood cells. And then the fourth type of epoxia is what's called stagnant. In the aviation world, it's like pulling G's. You know, if you're up there doing steep turn and somebody yanks the, and your student yanks the uh, yoke back too hard, you'll feel the G's down on your head and I don't know, start feeling lightheaded, but that's more so fighter pilots this happen is it's just stagnant. It's just oxygen is not, blood is not reaching the brain because of G forces, or in some cases, the heart doesn't have the capacity to pump oxygen, to pump red blood cells up to, pump the blood up to the brain. In the aviation world, because of our medicals, most of us don't have a lot of heart problems. So we're gonna be feeling stagnant hypoxia, usually in kind of a, when kind of a steep turn or, or when somebody pulls the yoke back kind of suddenly and all of a sudden we feel the G's kind of pushing, rushing, pushing down our head and pulling a little bit of blood out of, our, out of our brains. Those are the four different types of epoxia that you're gonna be tested over as you progress through your aviation career. If you have ever experienced hypoxia, uh, leave a comment down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos.